Stumbling out of bed And I still got you in my head From all those pretty words you said It's like I'm wasted Every time I see your face I'm losing track of time and space I don't know where I am It's like I'm wasted And I won't waste it And I promise that I I will stand by you forever I can't get you out of my mind I will follow you wherever And I won't waste it Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, thank you. I'm Leanna. I've been married to my husband Rob for I don't know how many years. I make videos about my family and our four kids and how we just got back from New Zealand and we're trying to set up a homestead. We are homeschoolers. I also uh, make videos about overcoming my traumatic past and parenting and moving forward and basically living my best life even though I had a crazy start. Um, I want to just take a second and thank all the returning subscribers. Thank you guys. I really appreciate you. Um, this is a video that's been in the works. I promised about a month ago, I think. Um, I finally got this all done. And if you clicked on it, it's because you want to know about eighth grade curriculum. You want to, or you want to know about curriculum in general. This one specifically is eighth grade curriculum because my oldest is going into eighth grade. I am so proud of him. He is the one that we started this homeschool journey with. I have made all the mistakes with him and I'm gonna show you guys so you don't make them too. All right, so let's just start by saying thank you to everybody who subscribed. I really appreciate you guys and let's move forward. Okay, so I wanna start by saying for middle school, it's a little bit different um, setting up than elementary school I have found the past couple of years because you are basically laying the foundation for how their high school time high school career I don't know how you would phrase that would go and you're figuring out not only are you doing the basic subjects but your the transcript transcripts for this time are very important because you want to make sure that they're starting and getting into the foreign language they're getting into um the extracurriculars, they're doing all these things to set them up for high school, which will then set them up for college or trade school or whatever it is they plan to do after they graduate high school. So that's what we're doing. Eighth grade, I'm nervous for because <laughs> it's the last year we have before, um, before he starts high school. And oh man, it's just scary. I'm just, yeah. So anyways, anyway, uh, I keep saying anyways. So first of all, how to find curriculum for um, middle school. Google. That's your friend. That's your friend. Uh, I'm joking. All right. So what I have done in the past is I've done what's called box curriculum, which is where you go and you buy all the curriculum and it comes in this big giant box to your house it has everything you need from math to science to reading all the subjects and it says what grade or age level that um, you should use um, I in the past we've used for him online curriculum and we did that while we were in New Zealand and part of the time we've been back in the States um, I per and we've done piecemeal curriculum which isn't really a word it's not a term um, <laughs> It's not, don't quote me on that. But basically I've pulled from different resources, found what I like in each subject. I don't buy from the same company for all of them. That seems to be what works best for us most of the time. It's been a while since I've done that. So this year for eighth grade, I went to Amazon and Amazon since the pandemic has been listing a lot of curriculum more than I've seen in the past. They've always had textbooks and things, but I've seen them expand by a lot which i'm very excited to see and i was able to find a set of books called everything you need to know there you go they are made by workman publishing company in new york um and they have an entire set for middle school and we're very excited to use this i've looked up reviews on this and that's what i'm picking for this year 
So long story to get to where I am. I am using the, I, using the complete middle school study guide for him this year. And I have got him everything you know, need to know about American history, everything you need to know about the English language, everything you need to know in math, everything you need to know in science. I got him world history in case he doesn't want to do the American history book, but we're going to go over probably both over the next year and a half. And I got him everything you need to know in computer science because he was very interested in coding this year. And what we did before we bought the curriculum is we sat down and we talked with him about what does he want to learn for eighth grade? Does he want to, what, what extracurriculars he wants? Does he want um, something that I could buy a curriculum for? Or does he want to go to a class? What, he wants, what does he want to do? So we've decided for his foreign language, he would like to attend a class. And our local community college has some uh, classes that we can look into for his middle school career. So, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into that for him. We also have some tutoring companies nearby that offer that specifically so you can go and supplement your curriculum. And we also have a few things um, online. There's Duolingo, which we've used in the past. There's, um, let me see, um, there's Duolingo, there's Rosetta Stone, and there is, um, Power Homeschool that he used last year. He liked Power Homeschool the best, um, but he likes, he wants, we wanna try this year to get off the computers and get back into the books and get back into the field trips and things like that. So we're going to look into possibly him going in person for a class for foreign language. Um, and the other classes, that was one of the mandatory ones that I made for him for this year. Um, the rest of the stuff he gotta choose that was not English, uh, math, science, and he really wants to do coding. He did la coding last year on the computer with an online curriculum. And he decided he wanted to continue that and actually make his own video game, hopefully this year. So fingers crossed that he learns enough this year to code his own video game, because that's a goal of his. Another thing we've asked him what he wants to do is, does he want to do a sport? Because all of our kids have to do something for PE, whether it's a sport or they practice yoga at the Y or they, Basically, I give them a big range of things to do for PE, and then they pick that what they want to do. He wants to join a sport this year. He has not picked the sport, but he has to have the sport picked by August. So, to be continued on that. But he's going to do a sport this year instead of um, taking a class or anything like that for his PE. Now, I don't know if he's going to do the same sport all year long and switch out. I'll give you an update video when I know that, but that's what I know so far. I just want to mention this video is not sponsored by this company that I bought our curriculum from. It's just that I found that that is the best I could find for middle school. Like the biggest complaint that I have or that I've seen about middle school curriculum is there's not enough of it. Like once you get out of elementary school, it's harder to find curriculum. So if I can pass on a good resource that I found, I'm gonna pass it to you guys. We did look into buying box curriculum again because it, it has been a while since I've bought curriculum. And we decided that was not the case because a lot of uh, box curriculum was just not fitting him. Um, I will leave some links to some curriculums that we looked into because we did look into K-12 buying their curriculum from them. And we looked into Ibeka or Abeka. I don't ever pronounce that correctly and I'm sorry. We looked into a couple other ones and I will link those down below, but this is this is what we ended up using for my eighth grader. He's going to have a journal that he keeps every day, which we tried doing last year and we were not as consistent on it as I would like to be. And he has a reading list that I compile for him for the year for him to do. And he usually makes a journal entry on what he read that day. And those go together. Um, another thing that we do that I'm not showing in this video is I usually have a agenda. I don't know why I put it into my hand. I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm weird. I honestly, I have an agenda like I keep for myself. And at the beginning of the week, I try to write down the pages they have to get done for each day, the lessons they have to get done for each day, the projects that they need to work on, and that is basically tells them everything they need to get done for the week. They pick up their agenda for me, we go over what they needed to get done that day, 
together. Um, they go and do their independent work, usually my kids. I don't know if you can hear my kids, they're screaming and yelling downstairs, sorry. I'm still looking for a better spot that doesn't make so much noise. Um, but usually I let them do their independent work and then um, I rotate out who needs my help during the day. And that's how we get through our day. So I'm really hoping, since RJ is an eighth grader this year, that there will be more independent work for him and I will be helping with the harder subjects that he has coming, um, but we'll see. We'll see, because I honestly, I've looked into these books. They're freaking awesome. They cover sixth through eighth grade. So I'm pretty sure like um, he's gonna fly through the parts that are gonna be review for him and that the harder part will be on the second half of the book where you get into the eighth grade stuff. Um, it was pretty easy. I went, I, um, I went to some local uh, Facebook groups local Facebook groups, but it was, it was Ohio Facebook um, homeschool groups. I joined those, I asked some questions about what people thought was good eighth grade curriculum. And then I hopped on Amazon because I saw their selection was bigger and that's how I found these. I looked up reviews on them. I do want to give you guys some insight into these books because uh, I'm just letting you know what I'm using. This is not me recommending them to you, but if you want to use them, that's great. Some pros I have about these books is there are parts in the book where it's laid out like a notebook on the inside. I don't know if it's gonna focus. It's like a lined journal kind of notebook. Not really a college ruled, but it's more, yeah, it's a call. It's like a, it's, uh, yeah, it's got lines in here, like a normal notebook, and they can make notes in here, and they can do some of the uh, assignments inside the book. It's made like a workbook kind of situation. And I'll probably have a notebook that goes along with this so they can have extra practice. Oh, I'm sorry, Audrey can have extra practice. It's not really for the girls. Um, but so that he can have extra practice with uh, the assignments. But um, if your kid's right in it, it's not, the con is it's not gonna be really easily passed down. But the pros are if you wanna reuse curriculum for younger children, if you end up liking a curriculum and you don't wanna buy it a second time, is you can just pair a notebook with it instead of having them write in this specific notebook. But I thought that was pretty convenient, especially if you're not gonna be reusing it. Um, let's see, there's questions, let's see if it'll focus. There's questions in it and they can answer on the page. Another thing that I do like about this is that it really does cover everything they need to know for middle school in one book. The con of that is though that some of the lessons are shorter than some than you would need for some of the thing for like let me show you like some kids will pick up things quickly so you don't necessarily need to supplement this which is good um this isn't the one i'm talking about this is the world history one for instance the spanish armada you get like a one page reference that's, that's the more difficult part about this curriculum with the everything you need to know. It kind of gives the abridged version for world history. So if you're using this for world history, I would suggest finding supplements to add to their lesson plan for what they're gonna study for that section. Like, I, I, there's so much more that, and obviously things could be argued about everything in world history that like, with any world history curriculum, like they kind of go over it shorter. But I feel like at middle school level, they should know a deeper understanding than a one page summary. So you're definitely gonna wanna uh, supplement. Uh, Pinterest has a lot of really good ideas and I will be going to Pinterest. And I'm gonna do a video on how I go to Pinterest and I break it down for what I look up to supplement when I have a curriculum like this. It's been a while since I've had one like this, so. Yeah, there's no real projects in the books as far as um, science goes or history or anything. So if you wanna do a project, you're gonna have to look that up yourself if you wanna use this curriculum. I'm gonna do that because we, we enjoy projects. My kids are more hands-on learners, so we like to have things to do in addition to just doing the book work. And um, that's what, how I plan to make this work for the year. Um, I will be showing you guys the agendas once they come in. I'm gonna show you all the agendas for all the kids because I use a different one for middle school than I use for elementary school. And I'll show you how I fill them in. 
and I'll show you how I use them for even the little one. My youngest is going to into kindergarten, just so you guys know, in case you didn't know that. Um, and I will be doing a whole video on that because I run kindergarten and first grade way different than I run fifth grade or eighth grade. I mean, and I guess you guys would expect that, but stay tuned. I don't know why I did it. That was dumb. I don't know why I did that. Sorry guys, that was, that was bad. All right, this video has rambled on long enough. Um, overall, great curriculum I think so far. I'm gonna do an update video at the end of the year and tell you if we stuck with it because we don't always stick with the curriculum that I use. If, in case you want, no, in case you're a new homeschooler, you don't have to stay with a book you don't like. If you're, they're not learning and you're like, this is just not working for us, trade it out get something else. I know that's hard to do, especially when you've bought book your, uh, you've bought a set of curriculum and it was like a thousand dollars. I know. Cause you're like, I just wasted all the money, but it's better to not use something they're not going to learn from than to keep pushing. Cause we've done that. We've kept pushing and my children were miserable and I wish I had traded out sooner. So I'm going to let you guys know if this actually works for my son. I'm hoping fingers crossed. And, um, I'll let you know because <laughs> I, I won't know until probably around Christmas is when I'll know if this actually is as good as I think it is. And thank you guys for watching. <laughs> I know this is a scattered one. My brain is every which way today. Um, I'm going to do a house update for this week, an actual house day update to show you guys how far we've gotten downstairs and in the bathroom, which is almost nada. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. <laughs> Stay safe out there because I know it's freaking crazy right now. And love you guys. And bye. <laughs>